Uh, hello. Thank you for coming to the 2013 Cheshire County Candidates Forum. My name is Travis Patterson, and I'll be moderating the event today. I'd like to thank the audience as well as the candidates uh, for attending. The format will go as follows. Each candidate will have a 90-second opening statement, uh, a 10-minute Q&A with questions from the moderator and audience, followed by a 90-second conclusion. First up, we'll have Daryl Perry, and following that, we'll have a debate session between Ian Freeman and Chris Roberts, both running for at-large city council. The debate session will start with a 90-second opening statement from each candidate, followed by an eight-minute Q&A session and questions from the audience. Both candidates will then be able to ask each other two questions with a 60 seconds response in the bottom. All right, so first up we'll have Daryl Perry, Daryl W. Perry, running for mayor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And you might want to talk into the mic. I don't know if the audience can hear you when you're oh, yeah. speaking. I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I am running for mayor of Keene, New Hampshire. And I'm the only opposition to the incumbent, Kendall Lane. And, you know, I find it odd that in a state that prides itself on political action, that the only time people are really politically active on a large scale is during the presidential election. Had I not filed to run, Kendall Lane would be unopposed. And I have a problem with people running unopposed. So I like to either run myself or try to find people to run against incumbents because I don't believe that anyone should be reelected at all, ever. As candidate for mayor, what is your top issue? The top issue, I would say, is taxation. There's a huge problem with property taxes here in Keene. It's some of the highest in the state, and it's definitely the highest in the region. And that's one reason that a lot of people don't move to Keene. Keene has been fairly stagnant as far as population goes, and recently there's actually been a decline in population, thus reducing the amount of people that the city can steal money from in the form of taxation, but yet the budget keeps going up and up and up, while the tax rates go up and up and up, and people leave the city or don't move here to begin with. So taxation is definitely the biggest problem in Keene. If the city of Keene were to eliminate two departments, which two would you want to eliminate? The two that I would eliminate first would be the code enforcement and parks and rec. Now, the first thing that a lot of people think when you say get rid of code enforcement is everybody's house will fall down. That's not true. There are a lot of cities and towns in New Hampshire, well, towns mostly in New Hampshire, that do not have zoning, thus no code enforcement. There are cities across the country that don't have zoning. And I would say that Houston, by far, is the largest city that does not have zoning. Now, does that mean that people build pig farms in residential areas? No, because people work together without government telling you this is zoned for this and this is zoned for that. People will work together because people want to be good neighbors. And secondly, with the code enforcement and zoning, you have an inherent interest to make sure that the structure that you are living in does not collapse on you in the middle of the night. You also want to make sure that it doesn't catch fire in the middle of the night because fires are never good. So when you get rid of code enforcement and zoning, then the world isn't going to end because if the world was going to end, it would have ended in places like Houston a long time ago. People naturally want to make sure that they take care of themselves. And as I said, people want to be good neighbors. And with the Parks and Rec, currently the city owns a lot of parks and they're providing services through the Parks and Rec department that are also being offered through the free market. 
So there's a duplication of services where people are using the free market service, but then the city decides, hey, we need to get, on, get in on this, and they start offering the service, and even if you don't want the service, you're still being forced to pay for the service, and I don't like that. I, I don't like people being forced to pay for anything. What issue do you disagree on most with your opponent, Kendall Lane, and how would you address those issues? Which issue do I disagree with most? I would probably say the Bearcat. Uh, Kendall Lane, as a city councilor, was overjoyed at the fact that the city of Keene was going to be getting this armored vehicle uh, given to them by the Department of Homeland Security. And there's actually a video online to where you can see then city councilor Kendall Lane leaning over and whispering to another counselor, we're going to get our own tank. And I don't like the militarization of police and the fact that Mayor Lane was overjoyed that the Keene PD would become militarized is probably where I disagree with him the strongest. And what would I do, what, what was the second part, what would I do about this issue? How would you address the issue? If elected mayor, I would personally drive the Bearcat back to the Linco manufacturer and give them the keys. All right, and as a uh, follow-up question to that, um, do you believe the issue such as the Bearcat, where there was large opposition from the people in the community, do you think it demonstrates the failure of the mayor council appointed governor? Absolutely. I believe that you know that's just one example to where the mayor council form of government has been shown to be a failure. In some of the neighboring towns, they have what is called town meeting, to where any of the people in the town who are concerned enough about what goes on in the town show up to the town meeting and they get to decide what happens in the town. Here in Keene, for the most part, you have one man by the name of John McLean who dictates what is to happen in the city. He goes before the city council and tells them, this is what I want done, and they generally overwhelmingly support what he wants done. So that is in no way representative of the people in Keene, it's representative of one man's interest and the city council that is too afraid to oppose that one man. All right, and um, my final question is, if elected, would you introduce a proposal to eliminate the need for a primary for municipal elections? Why or why not? Absolutely. Uh, the fact that they even had a primary ballot and you can see a sample of that in the back with 11 names for at-large city council proves that you can have an election for city council with more than 10 people on the ballot. There are cities across the country that have mayoral elections with numerous candidates. This year in Minneapolis there are 35 people running for mayor of Minneapolis. There's no primary to dwindle that down to two. So the elections can be done with more than two or ten people for a race. That and it's a waste of money. The city wound up spending nearly $5,000 to hold an election to remove one person's name from the ballot. So yes, I would introduce an ordinance to repeal the need for a primary ballot. Um, at this point, I'll open up the floor for any questions from the audience. Well, First of all, I got here late, so what are you running for? My name is Daryl W. Perry. I'm, a, I'm the only candidate other than Kendall Lane running for mayor. Okay. All right. If, if and so. as a mayor, I do have a question for you. Okay. The flooding problem here in Keene. I get flooded out every time it rains half. I live on the end of Marlboro Street. It comes down from the Chapman Road. And for five years, I listened to the council saying they're going to do something about it. And as yet, I'm still getting flooded. You know, 
the problem with flooding, especially in Keene, Keene is in a valley. So that you know automatically makes it more prone to flooding. I believe that there are definitely free market solutions that could be done to help prevent the flooding. And you know, if the city council would just get out of the way and let a private company come in to do something, then I believe something could definitely be done. But what I'm saying to you is city council has said in the past five years they're going to do something about the flooding and as yet nothing's been done. I have to vacuum my whole cellar out every time we get a torrential rain and that's been going on for quite a while and I've heard from the council we're going to do something about this, we're going to do something about this but as yet they have done nothing about it. Yeah I, I don't know what causes the flooding in your specific area, but most of the time flooding is caused from either a creek or a river overflowing its banks. So I believe that a free market would work to fix that to either build a levee or something else to you know, help control the river. And the city council, they don't really have anything in their interest. It does not benefit them to you know, allow a company to come in. Do you know Marlboro Street? There's no river there. I'm up at the end of Marlboro Street. I have Chapman Road up here. What would have to be done would be something to put on Chapman Road so it doesn't run down to us. You know, I, I'm, I'm on a hill, really, going upward at the end of Marlboro Street, and yet we still get flooded every time we have a rain. And every time the snow melts. So my solution in my mind is that to go on Chapman Road and do something a blockage up there. Yeah, I, I think that that is something that could definitely work. I just think that the city council needs to allow a private company to come in and actually fix the problem instead of saying, we'll do something, we'll do something, and then never do it. That's they true. need to just allow the private companies to actually come in and do something. All right, that's why I'm running for council in Ward 2. All right, that is uh, time. Uh, Daryl, you now have a 90-second closing statement. Well, I think that people are pretty much familiar with my positions. I, again, I'm the only opposition to Kendall Lane. So really the only thing that I can say is if you like the way things have been going, then don't vote for me. If you want somebody that will actually be a voice of opposition to the status quo of continuing to increase taxes and continuing to increase the budget, vote for me. But if you like how things are and you want to pay more in taxes, vote for Kendall Lane. All right, thank you, Daryl. Um, Ma'am, you said you were running for Ward 2? Yes, City Council. City Council. Council at large. Would you like to... Uh, sure. Okay. I think she said you're at large? Uh, yes. That's Bev. Bev Creamer. It's okay. okay. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get this third chair up here. Then you, Chris, and Ian. I thought you were in Ward 2. She just said at large. Oh, no. All right. Now we'll start the debate session between Beverly Creamer, Ian Freeman, and Chris Roberts, each running for at large. Each of you will first give a 90-second opening statement, followed by an eight-minute question session, and then questions from the audience. So, Hi, my name is Beverly Kramer. I'm running for uh, Ward 2 City Council, or Council at Large. And the reason I'm running is, for one of the things is, I've noticed in the city of Keene, your property values have been going down constantly. 
and yet the taxes had been going up constantly. And the other thing, uh, I think the pumpkin festival is a nice thing. I enjoy going to it, but I think it doesn't benefit all your taxpayers. It just benefits a few people down on Main Street. And I think that they ought to start charging donations to run that pumpkin festival. And um, I've been to other areas where they've had festivals, like in Hampton, they have a seafood festival. And they charge people, you know, they ask for donations. And if you get 70,000 people coming into Keene, and you get even a dollar out of half of them, you got $35,000 there. And uh, as I say, the Pumpkin Festival, it's good for downtown, but it does nothing for the property owners. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm Ian Freeman. I'm running for at-large council, and uh, I'm a candidate who supports liberty. I don't know if there are that many people in Keene running for political office who support liberty, and I support it every issue every time, uh, no excuses. So I believe that you should be free to live your life how you want, as long as you don't harm anybody else. And there's just nobody on the city council that represents a viewpoint like that. So if you agree with that viewpoint, then you probably should vote for Ian Freeman in the upcoming election. A couple issues uh, that I think are particularly important. One, taxes. Uh, taxes are out of control. I agree with Beverly. Uh, they're absolutely out of control here in Keene, and there's no sign that they're going to 